uh, say that you all have been very helpful in educating me. I happen to be uh, one of the few members of this committee that's one of those evil lawyers everybody talks about. Uh, so I need lots of help in understanding these things. Uh, but I am concerned about privacy issues. And Mr. Ivey, your company uh, has some smart meters, as I understand it, and you all have an opt-out uh, provision. Can you tell me why that's important to your customers? Uh, the opt-out provision is, is as much uh, not wanting to have a smart meter on the side of their house as it is anything else, uh, frankly. So they have a, a standard digital meter that we read uh, manually once a month. That's not very many. It's left in less than half a percent of our, our consumers went that direction. Uh, we're more, um, I'm more concerned about the, like the hourly information that we can collect and, and maintain in our large database that we've got. That's the part that I'm looking to try to conceal. And if uh, we can still get access to more historical type, type information that they could get already before smart meters were available, fine. I don't have an issue with that. Okay. I do appreciate that. I am concerned about all the collection of this data and, and um, being able to predict with the new smart grids and so forth what the usage is going to be is very important. But when it comes to an individual house, sometimes, you know, just because we can doesn't mean we should. So I appreciate that perspective. I am excited, although I'm having some kind of a technical glitch here. I don't know whether my phone's too close or whether I'm just electric today or something. But, um, Mr. Kamen, I'm excited by the technology you're talking about with these small generators. Um, so how small uh, a facility can they be used at and how big can you go? Sadly, I think, again, the thermodynamics limits this kind of technology from getting very, very big. But it can get pretty small. We built a few small ones for uh, DARPA a number of years ago that a man could carry around the forward base and run it on any liquid fuel. Um, the ones that we built now with NRG produce 10 kilowatts. That's enough for a small neighborhood of houses or a small business. It's right, the size of a typical home appliance. Uh, let's, I, de let's define the small neighborhood. I live on a cul-de-sac with 13 houses. Do I need okay. to be bigger? Uh, the average American home consumes uh, less than 2 kilowatts. So a 10 kilowatt unit, and I would probably put a cluster of three or four of them on a pad, and then they, at that last pad at the bottom of what used to come from all those things we've been talking about, distribution, switch, gear, tread, a, a, a half, uh, let's say, four of these on a pad would handle your neighborhood and would have the advantage that if one of them went down with the redundancy you have, the other three would keep everybody happy and at their convenience somebody would fix the one that went down. And, and as a part of that, because I was thinking about when the testimony was going on earlier about the, the, the storms and the neighborhoods being wiped out. The big advantage we have is, of course, we'll run on any fuel and typically your neighborhood has buried lines in it that are bringing natural gas. You probably have buried tanks with heating oil or propane. Those things are way less susceptible to problems than wires running through all the trees that get taken down by ice or wind or hurricanes. And these boxes then are so close to where you need them that the rest of the system going down hundreds of miles away isn't going to affect you. And again, they're so close to your loads that you can also take their, quote, waste heat and turn it into your heat and hot water. It's no longer waste. Well, I'm hoping I have time to get back to waste heat, but you said it could use any fuel at, 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 on a couple of occasions, but then once you said liquid fuel. Oh, or gaseous. But what I meant, we right now run on natural gas, propane, diesel fuel, gasoline. The, the device is actually running on something that looks like a burner in your hot water heater, which is why it doesn't make lots of noise. In engine, the engine, the diesel cycle, Rankin cycle, auto cycle, uh, typical, an engine has a very specific kind of fuel because it touches every part of the inside of your engine. It gets atomized, a spark comes in, or compression comes An engine typically has a very, very selective appetite for fuel. But your hot water heater will keep water hot if there's a flame under it and it doesn't really care what the fuel is. We are running a system that looks much more similar to your hot water heater, but we turn some of that energy into electricity instead of heat. So if I had a big, if I had a big storm and for some reason I lost, let's say I have natural gas, which my neighborhood doesn't, but let's say that we had natural gas and some, for some reason we lost our natural gas, would I be able to drive down to the, the local uh, gas station and, and get Absolutely. the tank filled up? Absolutely. When we were asked to fire these little ones up for the Department of Defense 
the original deal they said was you've got to be able to switch from one fuel to another with only a two hour cool down, shut down and refit it. We said to them, we don't need two hours. We'll add a little gasoline to the diesel fuel, throw in a little beer and let it keep running. And we never even shut the engines off as we changed fuel. I, I think this is exciting and I would love to get to waste heat, but my time is up. But, but I find it exciting from another perspective because one of the fears that, that some folks have, and I probably share some of that, is that if you get a smart grid that covers everything and you have just a few big providers, that gives a lot of power to a few folks in the switch room. This gives uh, power back to uh, smaller communities and so forth, and I think it's very exciting technology. Thank you all so much for being here. All of you, I had other questions for others, but I don't have time, but what a great panel. Thank you. Gentlemen, yields back this time. Recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and I want to thank our panel. Um, you know, we draft legislation, and if it becomes law, it may be 